What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we're gonna be comparing probably the two most talked about phones that are out right now, the new Google Pixel 6 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro. Obviously, these are just two very different devices. We have iOS versus Android, Apple versus Google. Each phone does some stuff better than the other. They have their own unique quirks and features. And while most people do tend to stay within their respective brands and OSs, I think a lot of folks might actually be deciding between these two Pro phones this holiday season. So I wanted to do this comparison to sort of break down what each phone offers, what they do best, the pros and cons, I will absolutely choose a winner for certain categories too. So let's just go ahead and get right into it and I'll break down everything you need to know about these two phones. To start off, I just want to quickly mention pricing here because that's already a factor to consider, I think. The Pixel 6 Pro starts at $899 unlocked and it's available in three different colors and three different configuration options. You can pay $100 more for 256 gigs of storage, another $100 on top of that for $512, but I actually think the $899 starting price is a pretty good deal for this phone. It's a bit cheaper than Google flagships of years past and it falls just a bit under the price of the iPhone as well. The iPhone 13 Pro starts at $999 for its base level 128 gigabyte storage option, comes in four color choices, and similarly for $100 more, you can also bump that up to 256 gigs if you want. To get 512 gigs, you're actually gonna go up another $200, and there's even a one terabyte iPhone 13 Pro available for 1500 bucks. So comparatively, the Pixel 6 Pro is the cheaper device across the board. And it's a particularly good deal if you opt for more storage versus the iPhone. If you're interested in doing some comparison shopping of your own, I'll leave some links down below in the video description to where you can get these phones at their cheapest current prices. Physically, the Pixel 6 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro are wildly different devices from top to bottom. Size-wise, the Pixel comes in at a large 6.71 inches. The iPhone is a more compact 6.1 inches. And I suppose if size is a big concern for you, a more fair comparison would have been this Pixel 6 Pro versus the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is also 6.7 inches. And maybe the regular Pixel 6 paired up against the regular iPhone 13 or 13 Pro here. But this is just the confusing name schemes we have now with every company putting Pro on everything. Sometimes the comparisons are a little tough to make. Across the front, the Pixel gets a near 89% screen to body ratio with minimal bezels and a small center hole punch selfie camera. The iPhone, of course, still has that notch and an 86% screen to body ratio. And if I'm being honest, just from a design standpoint, the all screen look of the Pixel is more appealing. The Pixel also has sort of a curved edge. The iPhone is all flat. I know some people have a preference there. I don't really mind either way. Around back, this is where things are a bit more controversial. The iPhone looks like any old iPhone released over the last couple of years. Frosted glass, triple lens camera, and a shiny stainless steel color matching frame all around. The new Pixel 6 Pro, on the other hand, is completely redesigned. It looks like nothing Google has released before. And I know some people were taken aback by this design with the cameras stretching across the whole backside and that black band there. For me, the more I've used this phone and the longer I've looked at it, it's definitely grown on me. You get a premium build on the Pixel 2, glass back, polished aluminum frames. For the prices you pay, this is absolutely the quality you'd expect. And you can't really go wrong with either phone. You just have to maybe decide which design you like best. Both phones are also IP68 water and dust resistant. They both offer wireless charging. The two differing features with that though are Apple's MagSafe standard, of course, with all those special accessories and Google's reverse wireless charging where you can charge other things like earbuds with the phone itself. Speed-wise, the Pixel also can juice up faster wirelessly. It supports 23 watts. The iPhone maxes out at 15 watts with a supported accessory, seven and a half with third-party accessories. So just a couple of other things to keep in mind there. And taking a quick look at the rest of the hardware, the left side of the iPhone has a silent switch, volume buttons, and SIM tray. The Pixel also has its SIM tray down there. On the right, similar power buttons. The Pixel has its volume buttons here. Down below, USB-C port for the Pixel, lightning, of course, for the iPhone, similar speaker and microphone setups flanking those ports with, by the way, secondary speakers in the earpieces of both phones for a stereo out loud experience. Interestingly enough, I actually think the speakers on both phones sound almost the same, but here's a sound sample of each so you can decide for yourself.
With the unlocking and the security, the Pixel retains a fingerprint sensor, but on the 6 Pro, it's now an in-display reader. In my experience, this unfortunately hasn't been the fastest or easiest to use. It usually takes a couple of tries to get unlocked. It's definitely not up to the same standard as like the S21, but at the same time, at least it's there. The iPhone, of course, does not have any fingerprint sensor. Face ID is what we use to get in, and this has always been a love-hate thing for me. It's great sometimes, it's very inconvenient other times, and speed-wise, it's fast when it works, but very slow to retry when it doesn't. Side by side, getting into the devices is just different each way, so it's tough to really gauge. I think it's just a matter of personal preference here. So let's now get into the important stuff, starting with the displays. The extra-large 6.71-inch screen on the Pixel 6 Pro is a bold and bright AMOLED panel that comes in at a resolution of 3120 by 1440, cramming in an impressive 512 pixels per inch. The iPhone 13 Pro offers Apple's own Super Retina XDR OLED screen at a slightly less sharp 2532 by 1170 resolution, pushing about 460 pixels per inch. Now, there's a few things to consider here. Up close, while the Pixel 6 Pro does pack in more pixels, I can't really tell a difference in sharpness or clarity, though objectively based on the specs, the Pixel has the advantage there. With their max brightness, to me, the iPhone seems to be the brighter display when I crank it up all the way, but with the colors and the overall viewing experience, I think these displays look surprisingly similar. They're bold, they're punchy, anything you watch looks great on either one. Of course, there's a size advantage with the Pixel 6 Pro, and the all-screen, no-notch look is much nicer too. I'm definitely happy watching content on either one, and I'm sort of surprised to say that I don't really feel like either phone has a clear advantage with the overall viewing experience. Now, there's also one more element with the displays, the 120 hertz high refresh rate. So technically, both phones are capable of up to 120 hertz on certain apps and under certain conditions. They're variable rate displays, so they'll automatically change and adapt to whatever you're doing or seeing on screen. And this allows for an ultra responsive and incredibly smooth user experience on both. But I will say that the advantage here sort of goes to the iPhone, only because this is the first time an iPhone has had this super smooth, high refresh rate display. Android devices, Pixel phones, it's been offered for a couple of years on those, so I know it's a little unfair to say, but iPhone users have kind of been waiting for this for forever, it feels like, and I think it's actually a deciding factor now in picking this new iPhone 13 Pro in particular. So one of the hardest things to compare between an Android device and an iPhone is performance, because these two phones just offer completely different software experiences that are run by different specs under different scenarios. But I still want to at least talk about a couple of things. Obviously, these are two of the highest spec, most powerful new flagship phones you can buy. And now, both phones are powered by their respective company's own processors. The iPhone, of course, packs Apple's latest A15 Bionic chip. The Pixel received Google's newest custom in-house processor the Tensor chip, and I actually think this now sort of evens the playing field in a way, but it's a particularly interesting tidbit for the Pixel. Rather than relying on a Snapdragon processor or maybe something else, Google has complete control over not just the Android experience, but the hardware and internals now too. So they can further optimize what they need to in order to deliver the best Android experience possible. And I do think that they do that here in the exact same way that Apple has total control over both the hardware components and software experience on the iPhone. Where things differ though are with the updates. The iPhone 13 Pro is likely gonna see six, seven, eight years of updates at least. Apple still updates devices from that long ago today. The Pixel 6 Pro, on the other hand, will get at least three years of major Android updates, that's what Google says, five total years of security patches, but you aren't going to get as many updates for as long versus the iPhone. That to me makes the iPhone the better long-term investment if you think you're going to keep it at least, say, four or five years or longer. With the overall user experience, of course Android and iOS are just so different, similar than ever in some ways, but 
but vastly different still. And I know people are passionate about their OS choices. Objectively, the Android experience is more flexible, more customizable, and with the Pixel in particular, feels more feature rich at times. The iPhone almost immediately traps you into Apple's ecosystem. iOS has plenty of its own fan favorite features too, like AirDrop and iMessage. But what you see is what you get here. And I know a lot of people sort of gripe about the same old experience with its limitations year after year. If you just want to talk about pure speed for the sake of the comparison, launching some of the same graphics heavy apps and games shows a similar result actually. It's no secret that Android apps and iOS apps, while they might be the same game from the same company, just run differently on each phone. The launch and load screens are sometimes different, the in-app experience might differ a tiny bit, but speed and performance wise, these phones are super close and I personally don't see a big advantage either way. The important bit is in-game play and it should come as no surprise with how powerful these phones are, you're not gonna see a blip or an issue either way. This is absolutely expected on the iPhone at least. With the Pixel, I know there were some unanswered questions about Google's new Tensor chip since we've never seen it before, but for me, it's really been flawless. All in all with the user experience, that just comes down to iOS versus Android. What do you prefer? And are you willing to switch? Speed, performance, capabilities, you're getting the top of the line, the best of the best with each phone in their respective brands. It's just more of a different user experience from top to bottom and a decision you'll have to make based on your personal preferences. Now, one sort of performance metric that is measurable and comparable is the battery life. Size-wise, these two phones have crazy different battery capacities. The bigger Pixel 6 Pro packs in a large 5,000 milliamp battery inside. The iPhone 13 Pro with its smaller form factor holds just a 3,100 milliamp battery. But interestingly enough, in my tests and during day-to-day -day experiences, it is the iPhone 13 Pro that lasts longer. Not by much, we can call it maybe two total hours. I've pushed my Pixel past 14 hours of screen on time with just letting it run nonstop. The iPhone under similar circumstances has been a 16 hour device for me. They're both all day phones, no matter how you use them. Everyone's usage is obviously different though. And there's maybe a little more you can do with the Pixel to better optimize the battery life if you want to. But I do think Apple put some extra effort in their own right this year to better optimize the battery and the longevity, and it seems to have paid off. Finally, we absolutely have to talk about those cameras. And for the purposes of this video, I'm actually just gonna stick with the basic overview because I've already done a full feature length dedicated camera comparison video for these two phones. And I'd highly recommend checking out that separate video to get an in-depth analysis on everything. Spec wise, the Pixel 6 Pro actually has an all new camera hardware setup really for the first time in years. It consists of a 50 megapixel main lens, a 48 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. You also get a new 11.1 megapixel selfie camera up front. The iPhone has a slightly upgraded, but very familiar 12 megapixel main lens, 12 megapixel telephoto lens, and 12 megapixel ultra wide, and the same 12 megapixel selfie it's had for a while. The hardware doesn't really tell the whole story though, breaking down some of the capabilities bit by bit. The wide angle and telephoto lenses on each phone have different capabilities. So for the Pixel, its wide angle doesn't get as wide as the iPhone's. Conversely, the zoom capabilities are better on the Pixel than the iPhone. The iPhone has macro photography mode for super close up pictures, the Pixel does not. Both phones have their own unique set of shooting modes and features. The Pixel has its magic eraser tool, which is incredible and you can edit a picture on your device and make an object disappear. There's also the new action pan and long exposure modes for very unique shots. The iPhone has its portrait filters, photographic styles, Dolby Vision, and ProRes video. The iPhone, I also think, is still the better video taker in general, but for just plain old everyday pictures, the Pixel absolutely still reigns supreme when it comes to capturing as much detail as you can in every single shot. Again, I know I sort of glossed over this, but the camera comparison really deserves a separate video because there's just so much to go over. So check that out, linked above, see everything in action. I think it's worth your while. All in all, like I said already, these two phones are just so different. And I know people are sort of set with a lot of the stuff that they like better, particularly iOS 
iOS or Android, but each phone has its advantages. The Pixel is cheaper, but it's bigger. The fingerprint sensor is convenient. It offers way more with the software experience, and it's the better picture taker too. The iPhone gives you iOS and everything that goes along with it, better battery life, pro video modes. I think if you're open to using either Android or iOS, there's actually a lot more to consider with both phones. And at the end of the day, you can't really go wrong with either one. But what do you guys think is the better device? Which would you prefer? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.